<laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the Two Sons Podcast. We'd love it if you showed us some support. Please hit the subscribe button. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Two Sons Podcast. Many of you guys know me from Hoops Tonight at the Volume. I've always done basketball stuff, but I've always been a huge Star Wars fan. And I'm particularly excited for this Obi-Wan TV series. And my buddy here, Luke, who happens to be my best friend, him and I have always been huge Star Wars fans. And this series, we were so excited for it. We had so much we wanted to talk about. And I thought it'd be a really cool opportunity to do something that I've wanted to do for a really long time, which is to have a show where I don't have to talk about basketball all day, every day. And we can focus on everything else, including uh, everything about Star Wars. We're going to get into a, the weeds of Star Wars a lot on this show. Not just the show, not just the shows like Obi-Wan. We'll get into the movies. We'll rehash and rewatch old Star Wars content. We'll go, my buddy and I, we both just read the entire opening trilogy of the High Republic series. And uh, that was super interesting. We're going to get into that a little bit, even in this first episode. It's just going to be, at first, it's going to be Star Wars heavy surrounded Obi-Wan, but we're going to do, we're going to get into Game of Thrones when that comes back in June. We're going to get into major movie releases, maybe ma major TV releases and all of the above. I'm super, super excited. I sincerely appreciate you guys clicking on the show and coming to hang out with us today. This is Lola, my buddy's uh, sweet Great Pyrenees puppy. She She's will, a rescue pup. Yeah, she, she will definitely be prominently featured in the show, but I'm very excited. Dude, Mostly her backside, probably, because <laughs> she straight up always demands pets if yes. you stop, as you can see. Are you excited to get started, man? Yeah, man. Let's get going. I'm amped. Okay, so obviously with the Obi-Wan series... There's a ton as a Star Wars fan to be super stoked about. Anytime we get more live action Darth Vader, that's a huge win. Agreed. We felt the same way about Rogue One mm. with the with the guy who uh, uh, came in and did the reshoots. Gosh, I'm blanking on his name right now. But the guy who came in and did the reshoots, he added that scene at the end because he just gets it. He gets it. He gets Perfect it. example of Vader just doing his thing. Yes, exactly. And so... We got we get that in this series. We get Ewan McGregor, which obviously is great. We get the Inquisitors, which I'm super stoked about, which we're gonna get into. They're they're gonna dive further into the crime, the syndicates and stuff like that, you can tell, because that was hinted at in the trailers. But before we get to any of that, as a as a fan of Star Wars, we're obviously stoked about the show. That goes without saying. Sure. But the underlying story of the show is that it opens up a gaping plot hole in the entire George Lucas storyline, which is basically that in A New Hope, when Obi-Wan and the crew land in the Death Star, Darth Vader mentions feeling a presence he hasn't felt since, and then he trails off. Trails off, yeah. And then later on, he explicitly mentions that when we last met, I was but the learner, and now I am the master, which mm. is pretty cut and dry in the sense that like it, it's pretty cut and dry in the sense that you you can you can infer there that they haven't seen each other since Musafar sure okay right. so uh, this to me g gets into the the core problem of the the Disney concept of chasing the money rather than uh the the kind of like sensical plot stuff right but my question for you to start is where where's your head at with mm -hmm the with the huge subplot with this show that it basically takes a big shit on George Lucas's entire <laughs> entire original plot line and storyline. Yeah. I think I think they're probably going to pull it off. I think you're right. I think that, you know, Ewan McGregor exists still and it's an awesome opportunity to have him on in a show. Um I do think that if Dave Filoni is able to do his thing. He'll probably be able to pull it off and be able to cover that up somehow. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe it's not even an issue at the end. Like, who knows? Maybe, you know, in a few months we'll be looking back and be like, you know, that time when we thought that they were just going to drop the ball and they didn't. But I, I think that they'll be able to pull it off somehow. I honestly don't know how, though. Because that definitely is an issue nowadays when, like, an older movie is then paired with, like, newer content. Um I will say, though, Star Wars has mostly done a good job with that, but I think that is because of, again, Dave Filoni's craft. I think, I think he'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, you know, 
it reminds me, I remember I watched this movie, um, gosh, what was it called? Um, Tenet. Okay. And the, the, the gist of it was there was this like, like alternate reality they could enter. The characters could enter where time moved backwards. Hmm. And like, you could tell when you're oh. watching the movie, like the plot didn't make any sense, but you could tell like basically what happened was is some producers were sitting in a room one day and they ran an action scene in reverse and was like, you know what would be dope? A whole movie about this. This you know? was nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and it's funny because like, that's kind of the vibe that I get from almost every decision that Kathleen Kennedy has made yeah. since she started doing this. Like, like, and some of it's been executed well and some of it hasn't. Like for instance, right. it's like, uh, uh, so to your point, like, Ewan McGregor's still around. Well, it was like right. Harrison Ford's still around. Carrie exactly. Fisher's still around. Let's bring these guys back and let's do this. Or I hate to say it, but Carrie Fisher is probably the prime example. Of oh, that. for sure. Yeah. And then and then you get into like like even Rogue One, which was done really well. It was like more X wings. Like that's yeah. literally that's True. literally like the plot of the movie in a lot of ways. It's like I'll, we we always have joked that that movie's like Star Wars porn because it's like all of the things that movie did a much better job of capturing like the A New Hope vibe. Oh, they put a huge effort into that. You yeah, know, absolutely. Star destroyers that are models floating through like dark rooms, which is space. Yeah, yeah, it, incredible. They cap they copied a lot of the same you know like special effects things that they did in the in the original trilogy. It's all old school. Yeah, and so some of it has been executed well, but almost every like like. The Mandalorian series and the Boba Fett series, like even though I loved the Mandalorian series and Boba Fett, I thought was okay. Like they both of those seem similar, like just trying to capitalize on content that yeah. was like I call it like low hanging fruit. It's like Star Wars low hanging fruit. True, true, and and something that you've always brought up too in the past is you know I wonder if Star Wars ever starts to get away from this timeline too. Mm-hmm. So with with the High Republic uh, series, like that was fun you know, to, for them to get away from this timeline because there wasn't all these subplots that existed and layered on each other, which would probably be exhausting as, as a producer to, to create content for just because there's so many things to keep in mind. <clears throat> so, so many things and conversations that have been had, like you bring that up, you know, when they're on, uh, on the star, uh, death Destroyer, or star destroyer, like how, how, you know, Obi-Wan and Vader seemingly just meet up for the first time, but then, we'll see what happens, you know, with Rogue One, or not with Rogue One, but with, with uh, the Kenobi series. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull it off or if they're going to do it eloquently or not. Um, we'll definitely see, though. I don't know. Well, like, so with the High Republic series, is a perfect example. Everything that happened, and we're going to get to the High Republic series later on, but, like, everything about the High Republic series is the most important thing happening in the universe at that time. Right. And when you trap yourself within the timeline you're limited in the sense that anything that happens literally has to be the backing track to the real story like that's going to be a really interesting thing with this tv series is like anything they do with obi-wan and and anakin they cannot trample on the existing storyline which traps them well not only that too but i just you know what i just thought of is so we know Obi-Wan hangs out on Tatooine for forever. I mean, he's an old man. So, mm-hmm. so like, I wonder how they're going to deal with this where maybe Inquisitors show up on Tatooine and they're like, oh, Obi-Wan's here. <laughs> and then, and then all of a sudden, like, Obi-Wan, like, kills two of them. And then, and then, like, the Galactic Empire is like, oh, we'll leave him alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, no, but that's a great point. Yeah, like, like what are they going to do? It's like, Tatooine can only sit in his little hut and play Sabacc for so many days before, you know, the Empire starts to mess with them, especially if they know he's there. So I wonder how that gets dealt with, too, because especially with that animosity between um, Darth Vader and Obi-Wan, you know, like there was a huge history between uh, Darth Vader and Obi Wan, obviously, right? I mean, you know, Obi Wan is a true master. He he calls he calls Anakin. He's like, "You're my friend," you know. In mm-hmm. Revenge of the Sith, and they, they actually loved each other. So, for for the idea of like them being able to identify Obi Wan, potentially one of the most dangerous people in the galaxy, to them, 
and potentially just like leave them alone afterwards is crazy. And I wonder how they deal with that. Well, they, well to keep it simple, they can't they can't locate him on Tatooine. That's a trap now. True, exactly. but th- but that, that's a great example of what I'm what I'm talking but about. Then it's he like, like never touches an Inquisitor, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, like in theory, he could escape and disappear, and they could not find him. But the point is, is to your point, they can't locate him on Tatooine because at the time of the recording, they don't know where he is. I, right. I, I shouldn't say recording. At the time of New Hope, right? They don't know where he is. But you know, it, the the my my like kind of synopsis on this specific topic is, I'm really excited to see the show, and we're going to get into some of the details about that here in just a second. Sure. But, like, there's always going to be that part of me that is going to feel like this is a cheap thrill. I hear you. And that, to me, that to me is the worst part about all of this, that low-hanging root fruit. Like, Star Wars is sacred to so many people. It's, yeah. There's a hilarious yeah. South Park sketch about this where in the sketch, like, the whole plot of it is they swing a presidential election. The kids do. The kids of South Park swing a presidential election – to get Obama elected instead of Mitt Romney because Mitt Romney was going to sell Star Wars to Disney and they needed <laughs> Obama to be president to prevent the Disney from ruining Star Wars. Yeah. And it's the plot of the movie. And at the end, like they're all kind of like humming and like, the, cause they did, they did basically the, they did the job that had to be done, you know? Uh-huh. And it's like, that's kind of how I feel like this is sacred. And what's so stupid about it is there's so much time. Like there was no race it, it was like they they tried to squeeze the sponge out right away with like mm. all of the low hanging fruit instead of understanding right. that as soon as you obtain Star Wars, you have you could in the next fifty years completely grow the franchise into into like the next iteration of itself. Right. You don't have to squeeze the sponge right away. That was the part right. that I didn't get. No, and you're totally right. And there and there's so many other directions that they could have taken, like you brought up before. I mean, for example, like all of the legends books. Are fabulous like you and I have talked about Bane mm-hmm. a lot in the past mm-hmm. and, you know both love the Bane books and there's so many options and, and you know so many different things that they could have done but they've always stayed in this specific time frame which has been kind of frustrating because there's been times when you can tell that someone who didn't view Star Wars as being truly sacred like maybe you and I do where they got their hands on it and kind of did some ridiculous stuff like a cheap thrill mm-hmm. versus like, and, and people love Star Wars for the plot. They love Star Wars because everything that happens in it has effect on previous things. So then, you know, when, when we're talking about Han Solo, talking about how important it is to, to calculate jumps before he commits them. And then all of a sudden we're light speed skipping and we're going into the, Th- that's literally surfaces. the first, the first light speed scene ever in Star Wars is Luke saying, just jump. And Obi Wan or yeah. uh, uh, Han Solo cutting him off and being like, "No, dude, we'll die if we do that." Right. Yeah, and that's a perfect example. It's like Dave would not have let that happen. I feel like if he was the producer, right? So it's good that it seems like Dave's going to be involved in this. I'm super excited. Not to go down another rabbit hole, but um, <laughs> rabbit holes are good. Throughout this series, I really hope that they've they've thought things through and they that they don't try and do cheap thrills and that they actually try and make this build on star wars and not just you know do some quick things just for quick viewership and i really do hope that they do some great things for the true fans out there and not just the casual fan if for what it's worth like i'm really excited to see what dave filoni has in mind because if i if i'm certain of one thing it's he's lost sleep about this too yeah and probably so he probably has at least a half dozen different ideas for how to smooth over, you know, like it's like your beautiful table over there. My friend Luke here is an amazing woodworker. He's built this incredible 10 person wood table out of country maple. It's a work of art. If someone came in and disrespected your table by just gouging a knife mark into it, like, but then I came and I was truly respected your work. I would try to come up with the best possible solution to smooth over that gouge in like the most, you know, respectful and like in a way that like honored your original work. Right. And I think, I think that's what Dave Filoni is going to do. 